Time now for Inside Out as we are joined by SNY NBA insider Ian Begley. And Ian, obviously every game now has implications on the standings, but was Thursday's result more about how the Knicks played or Boston's apathy? Well, look, you give the Knicks credit, right? Because Boston played their guys. It's not like they sat them from the jump. But it was clear that Boston was not playing for anything and they weren't going to risk anything. You could see a few possessions where they were going less than 100 percent. seems like they've been doing that for the past couple games here. They are so far up in the Eastern Conference that these games don't really matter to them. So I think it was more about that. But certainly give Jalen Brunson credit. Give the group credit for winning in Boston, regardless of the circumstances, it puts the Knicks in third, and they're most likely to finish there because they would have to win their final two games. Milwaukee would have to lose its final two games for them to jump to two. For them to fall back to four, they would have to lose their last two games. Cleveland would have to win its last two games. And then, so you're at three if you're the Knicks, and you're waiting to see who finishes at six, whether it's Indiana, Orlando, or Cleveland. Ian, you mentioned Jalen Brunson, and it seems like we talk about him after every game, but he keeps dropping 35-plus, so uh, you're around this team all the time. How do you put into perspective this scoring run he has been on, especially when you look at the numbers since the All-Star break? Yeah, this run, I think, propels him into the All-Star, uh, excuse me, MVP conversation. Now, I don't know if he'll get, you know, top five votes from voters, but I think he's earned it because of this stretch without Julius Randle and mostly without OG and Obi. He's helped the Knicks tread water. They're 20 and 15 since Randle went out, and here they are still with a shot at the number two seed in the East, and Brunson's put them on his back. And he's played a ton of minutes. He's played hurt. He's played with his top guys hurt. So I think that the narrative around that, plus the numbers, he's over 30 points a game. And I think he's over eight assists per game since Randall went down. So stats in the story, to me, that puts him in that top five conversation. If he doesn't get a top five vote, someone is lost. All right, we'll have more on his outing later on in the show. But one other thing from the box score that jumps out to me is double doubles from Isaiah Hartenstein and Josh Hart. How have they continued to elevate their games since their roles have changed over the season due to injuries? You look at Hart in the starting lineup, and he's getting a triple-double, it seems, once every three games, and he's been fantastic. I think underrated as a distributor, that's been a big part of his game as a starter, and he's doing it with a sprained right wrist, and he's doing it with a knee that was barking earlier in this season, so playing through Knicks and still performing, and the same goes for Isaiah Hartenstein. Good sign for the Knicks tonight was the amount of minutes he's played because they've been ramping up his minutes as they get to the end of the regular season here because he has that sore Achilles they're hoping to get him to the point where he can play you know 35 plus plus night in and night out and he's been trending that way